we've been trying to tell you about the Chargers for a while, and, you know, I get it. It's hard to drink that Kool-Aid when it feels like every year on repeat you're told about how many good players they have, and yet they find ways to lose games they should win. Here's Justin Herbert after yesterday's game talking about the difference compared to last season. I think we're learning how to win games, and I think that's huge, been huge for us because over the past couple of years, you know, we've, we've let a couple get away. Um, but the NFL is tough, and, and winning games in the NFL is not easy. And you have to find a way because all of them are going to come down to two minutes late in the game. It's very true, right? They're all going to come down to two minutes late in the game. That game, to me, is about the different ways in which a good team can beat you, right? The Chargers' defense won them the game Monday. The, the Raiders had no points at the half. The defense won you the game. They got a stop when the, when the offense stalled out. They got a big stop and then a missed field goal by the Raiders. Yes, the offense capitalized on missed field goal, scored a touchdown. That was game over 28-14. But the idea was the defense won that one. Um, you know, they, lost, they won a close one in Kansas City, lost a close one in the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys didn't score after the first quarter. Uh, didn't score a touchdown after the first quarter. Win on a 56-yard field goal. Yesterday, they showed they could win a shootout. This is Brandon Staley talking about how his team won the game. Other games are like today where they turn into a track meet. And what we needed was our offense to score today. And that's what we did today. And i um, really proud of, of our entire team for winning that game because it took every man in that room to win it. You know, what we're trying to do here is earn respect every time we go out. It didn't really take their kicker. <laughs> He didn't really, uh, you can't miss two extra points and then go like, yeah, every guy helped us. Like, yeah, I don't know if that, that's really the case. Okay, so here's the question. And this is an honest question, you buyer. What's your level of buy-in with the Chargers? I am, uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm all in, but it would be everything but maybe one chip in. Uh, and the chip mean, mean, that would mean, in terms of in, that'd be in terms of winning a Super Bowl or like in terms of what, what, what yeah, is. Yeah, I think they're a Super Bowl contender. I do. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I really do. With a second year quarterback. Yes. And a or first year head coach. First year, first year head coach. First time head coach. First year head coach. Crazy. Yeah, there's the, can you win when you're, can you play well when you're not playing well? They've done that. And then, I mean, the offense was, I thought the, the I, I think the big thing is the various ways they can beat you and the various ways they'll call plays, you know, going forward on fourth down is one thing. It's also the play call going forward on fourth down. We mentioned the use of the tight ends this last week, this week it was, you know, in this game, it was using the wide receivers more. Uh, the, the only flaw I would say, I don't mind Austin Eckler scoring. I just don't think you can score on first down. That one, he comes to the middle of the line of scrimmage, and at that point in time, give yourself up, take a knee, and let the clock run. And then, you know, on second down, if you want to score and they let you score, fine. And if you don't score, then fine. On third down, I, I, don't, I think that, that's how I would do it. Jay Stu, how, what do you think of the, the touchdown where the Browns pulled Eckler into the end zone? Yeah, I mean, my first inclination was, oh, my God, you just gave time to Baker Mayfield. If they would have lost that game, I think we're making a really big deal out of that decision. Uh, I think he must have just like had a space moment. Just, just sit down. It standing up, you're gonna get pushed in. <laughs> I made a big deal out of it. You downplayed it initially. Everything worked out, and uh, and I'm glad. Oh, I don't mind. Like, look, remember, if they score a touchdown, they get the two point conversion, seven points. I like that better than the than the three points. Uh, uh, you know, especially considering how much the kicker had been faulty. Like, it's pretty hard to miss that twenty two yard field goal, but it's not impossible. It has been missed before. Whereas the touchdown, it's a no doubter, and they got to go all the way down the field to score. Like the idea that that's going to happen. I know they'd scored a bunch and hadn't turned the football over. Um. But it's more on first down, especially. And Eckler knew, but Eckler, he had a chance when he ran up to the line of scrimmage and there are guys there to just take a knee, just give himself up. And I don't think he knew exactly what he wanted to do. He gave himself up the, the play before, which led to the first down, but he didn't give himself up there. It was almost as if they haven't practiced that. Like they were told in the, in the huddle, like, hey, don't score here. And Eckler's like, okay, I'll make it up on the fly. <laughs> you just go take a knee. Well, that, that, is, that is a situation which will not happen again for a long time in the NFL. I feel stronger about that than I do the guys dropping the football right before the end zone, the Deshaun (laughs) Jackson, which still occurs, happened last week in college football. 
then this one, I, I think it'll be, everybody saw it. It'll be lecturing your head. If you're, if you mean to go down, just give yourself up because Eckler, it wasn't like he runs up to the line of scrimmage and about to go down. As you point out, he kind of bounced it outside and then was like, all right, I'm just going to stop here. Whereas all he had to do was take a knee. I mean, heck, all they had to do was take a knee. But all he has to do is, you know, I think he wanted to get as close as he could get and then go down, and he didn't realize they could pull him in. <laughs> it, was yeah. almost, it was almost like he was a point guard uh, right after uh, the, the half-cart mark just trying to run out the clock. Like, like he thought he was just going to be able to stand there and, and, and juke and jive for 30 seconds. I actually yeah. thought that it was a difference where they felt three yards could be the difference between Vizcaiano making or missing it. I mean, I, I mean, like I think that they wanted to make sure that he had the shortest possible field goal that you could get. Like otherwise, otherwise you would, and you didn't want Herbert to get hurt. You don't want him maybe just taking a cheap shot from a Browns player or something like that. So give it to Eckler, center it into the middle of the field. But I didn't think that they wanted to give up three yards on that play. They didn't just want to have him take a knee. So just because of how bad the kicks, you know, how bad Vizcaino was kicking. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's interesting. Like I, we, we do do this thing where we're like, we're running away from scoring a touchdown. I get the kicking a field goal as time expires is the smartest thing to do. If the kicker hadn't missed a couple kicks, it'd been a no brainer. Um, also, if you want to run out the clock, then the quarterback should just take a knee, right? That's what should really happen. Then, then you don't have to. You don't have to do anything to Eckler. Just snap that, it, victory formation, take it in. I don't disagree with that, but I think that that's what they were thinking. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Vizcaina was, I mean, now you put him in a pressure situation. I mean. Um, do you think yesterday was an outlier with the bat kicks and PATs? Do you think that's something that's going to become more common uh, as the season progresses? I mean, there was all, I mean, people were just missing. That was one thing. I was watching the red zone um, early on, and. They just there was miss PATs left and right. It was all over the place. So do you think that's something that's going to continue uh, as we move forward? Or do you think that was an outlier for just that Sunday? Um, I think it's a big problem heading forward. I think the biggest change, the biggest change in the NFL over the past thirty years, okay, or even forty-five years of my lifetime, was moving back to PAT. That was a massive change. You went from a 99.9% make. Go look at the last year they had the put at the three-yard line and if there were any misses. To now, guys miss it. And what happens is when you miss an extra point, right, the team almost feels like they didn't score sometimes. There's such, especially at home, like, oh, God. The, 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 the kicker gets in his own head. I mean, that's really what's happened here. The kickers get in their own head. So... But I, I think it's perfect. I don't think you just give away a point. Scoring a touchdown gives you six. six. You want to get in the seventh one, you got to kick a reasonable field goal. Or you, gotta want, you want eight, you got to run the ball in. Like, I think it's great, but I, I think it's because of that change. That change has been dramatic in the NFL. I find it amazing on how teams settle for long field goals. And in the Bengals-Packers game, the Bengals settled for a 57-yard field goal that, yeah, hit the upright, didn't go in. But they had a third down and four, and they ran the ball to get three yards closer, and that three yards set up the 57-yard field goal attempt. And it, it, it's and Mason Crosby wasn't missing 57 yarders; he was missing 44 yarders and 39 yarders. But it's it's the kicking game is just such a wild card. Such a crapshoot. Yeah, it is. And and for the Bengals to be like, and that was the other thing about in the Cincinnati Green Bay game, not to jump around from games, but it's okay. the point is, is then you missed that f- fifty-seven yard field goal, and then you gave the ball to Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, basically near midfield with twenty seconds left, that allowed then Crosby to miss another uh, field goal. I mean, it just is. It is absurd just uh, how, how crazy that game in Cincinnati played out, but overall of just how we look at kickers. They can't make extra points, but, hey, let's settle for a 57-yarder. That one, that, that part does make no sense at all, right? I mean, but what happens is you see Justin Tucker, you see uh, Zerline, and you start to think to yourself, well, my guy can do that too, right? Why can't my guy do that? Why can't my guy make that kick? Yeah, John. I did see, and to Dan's point and to your point, like, that's something I've seen a lot of in pre-shows or pre-games. Like, 
they showed Justin Tucker kick like a 70 yard field goal like before the game like look at this and yeah, it's Steph like Curry can make half court shots right. you, don't, you don't you don't run a play for a half court <laughs> shot to win a game exactly Steph go to your right and then right underneath the other backboard shoot it yeah what okay. we want you to do is go into the tunnel <laughs> we'll throw you the ball in the tunnel and then go make your tunnel shot to and, win the game yeah like, we'll win okay yeah i don't get it either <laughs> Jay Stu, how different is the, is the experience of watching your team when they win these games as opposed to when they'd always lose these games? I mean, it, it, it's amazing how much like uh, excitement I get with these Chargers in the fourth quarter when last year and the years before was, how are they going to lose this? Now it's like, how is Herbert going to find a way to win this? That's a huge difference. Um, huge. Massive difference. 